Hi, I'm Bob Gay, founder of New Rex. Today we're going to demonstrate installing a six volt positive ground alternator on a Model A Ford. The original third brush DC generator that was involved with these cars when they were built at the factory were wonderful at the time. But these days we have automatic voltage regulators and, and devices that make the, the item more user friendly. So we're going to change away from that old technology generator to a modern day automatic voltage regulated six volt positive ground alternator. And we're going to talk about how to install that today and everything involved with the, the tools process. needed to do this job are the 5 16 end wrench, the 7 16 end wrench, 9 16 and 3 quarter inch end wrenches. Also you're going to need a, a 3 quarter inch socket and a 6 inch extension and a 9 16 socket. In the kit, in the new Rex alternator kit package, you get the alternator, you get the H bracket tension with the uh, automatic adjustments, you get the tensioner, and you also get instructions. Instructions are something that you don't want to throw away. Read them, they're useful. To get started, you want to disconnect the battery. You can disconnect either post. In this case, we're going to disconnect the negative side. This is the generator that we're going to take off. And the first step involving taking this generator off is disconnecting the cutout wire. Cutout wire is the only electrical connection to the generator. We're going to use the 5 16 wrench. We're going to loosen up the bolt holding that wire on and disconnect that wire. After we disconnect this wire, we're going to loosen up the alternate, the generator rather, itself and get the belt off. Now that we have the cutout wire off, we're going for the mounting bolt, which mounts the generator right to the engine block. So we're going to loosen it up with our three quarter inch tools. We're going to unscrew the nut. We're going to slide that bolt right out of there. It goes forward, typically. And it usually has a lock washer on it. So be careful not to lose any of the ingredients as you're taking this apart. There's the bolt. There's the lock washer. Now I got it rotated up. I can take the belt off, take the bolt out, and the generator is off. The first thing we want to do before we install the new alternator is to tighten up the tension, the H bracket on the alternator. And what I normally do is take my 9 16th tools with my ratchet and I'll tighten this up. Now, as you can see, the alternator is going to go on like this. So I want to tighten this up so that this is in a straight line along with this edge of this alternator. So right now I'm going to tighten that up good and tight. We're going to install the unit now right on the engine boss where the original generator was located using the new bolts that came in the alternator kit. We're going to run the bolt through from the front to the rear. We're going to get started through the hole then we're going to take these fat washers that are in the, in the kit and we're going to put them behind the engine boss but in front of the back of the H bracket. Take some wiggling sometimes to get them in there. But what they do is they tension up the alternator onto the boss. You can wiggle the alternator a little bit, get them started, get them aligned, and then get the bolt in just like that. Now we're going to put the washer and the nut on. Now's the right time to put the belt tensioner on. The belt tensioner is in the bag that comes in the new Rex alternator kit. It involves a bolt, a lock washer, a flat washer, the brace itself, and this odd shaped cone piece. This is going to be mounted where this bolt is. So we're going to take that bolt out and put this in its place. 
This will act as a belt tensioner device once we get the fan belt installed. So we're going to screw that right in there, right where that bolt was. But we're not going to place it yet. We're just going to put it on there thumb tight so we can relocate it and put it in position with the belt. Okay, now Later. that we have the tensioner in place, we can slide the belt on. You want to take a look at that belt first. Now this is a good time to change the belt. If you have an old belt, if this area is starting to peel, if the sides look like they're worn, inspect your belt. Belts aren't expensive and this is a perfect time to install one when you're putting the new alternator on. Once you've decided you've got a decent belt, put the belt on, slide it over the pulley, pull it down and go to your three quarter inch end wrench and socket again. We're going to put this socket on the nut and we're going to put the open end side on the bolt. And now we're going to tighten it up. Okay, that's tight. Now, we're going to pull outward on this device and we're going to slide that belt tensioner into place so that it's holding this belt at about a half inch play tolerance, just like that. And we're going to tighten that belt in place with our 9 16 end wrench. At this point, we want to take the nut, the wire nut, that's the nut that's on this pin that has the red insulator on it, we're going to take it off, we're going to slide the wire on, we're going to put the nut in place and tighten it up. That's your only connection to the one wire 6 volt positive ground alternator. Now you're all connected up. Now it's time to hook up the battery and let's see how now she Now that works. we've got the alternator installed and we've hooked the battery back up, we're going to start the alternator up. Now, starting the alternator doesn't always happen just when you turn the engine on. You have to excite the alternator to turn it on. You have to do that each time. But that's one of the beauties of having a one-wire alternator. You're not changing any additional wiring. And this is the process. First thing you do, turn the key on, start the engine. After you start the engine, you look immediately at the ammeter. Reduce the gas pedal. As soon as you see the ammeter needle bounce to the right, just as it has, the alternator's on, and it will stay on until the engine stops rotation. Next time you start the engine, same thing. Reduce the gas pedal to turn it on, then you're on.